everyone and welcome back to a new weekly vlog. So it is currently Wednesday and I haven't filmed a clip yet but I just got a parcel through the mail so I thought I'd open this and unbox it with you guys. Right, I never know how to open these. Oh, there's a tab. This is what it looks like. So I am just going to spoil it and say that these are all books by the same author. But the first book we have is They Do It With Mirrors by Agatha Christie. If you don't know, I have a massive, massive love for the Miss Marple and Poirot series, I guess you could call it, that have been on ITV. I think it was ITV3. And a few weeks ago, I started to feel a bit crappy and I wanted something enjoyable to watch on television. And so I went on on ITV Hub and found a bunch of Miss Marple and Poirot episodes. So I basically binged those for a couple of days and I still have a load more to go which I'm so excited about but I wanted to start collecting the books because I recently read Murder on the Orient Express for a 24 hour readathon and oh my god it was so so good. I was just amazed by Agatha Christie's ability to create such a compelling mystery in such a short book and I've always enjoyed the mystery element of the books and the shows so I thought why not I'm gonna start collecting them and I'm gonna read them and I'm gonna try and read at least one book every month if I can we'll see but the first one is They Do It With Mirrors which is a Miss Marple mystery next up we have The Murder of Roger Ackroyd and this is a Poirot mystery then we have Ordeal by Innocence this is just a standard mystery it's not related to Poirot or Marple it's its own separate little thing and that is the same for Sparkling Cyanide as well. So I have a range of different books here. So like I said, I have two standard novels, one Poirot and one Marple. I am going to be collecting the Miss Marple books first. I did kind of splurge and get all of these but the more I looked into it I realised that I already have three Miss Marple books and there's only 10 I think so I'm going to try and collect the Miss Marple books first and I'm going to read them in publication order. Then I'm going to do Poirot and then I'm going to do the rest of the other novels. That's the plan anyway. I now have quite a collection which I'm really excited about. As well as these I have The Body in the Library, The Pale Horse, An Unexpected Guest, Death on the Nile, Murder at the Vicarage, the Mysterious Affair at Styles, and, and then there were none. I think that's all the books I have but this is going to be my newest little collection. I'm going to spend way too much money on these but it's something I love and I do really want to read the original stories because they're just such good mysteries and like I say these books are not the biggest. I think this is the biggest one there and it is 300 pages and the writing is not small either so yeah I think that'll be really fun. I can't wait to read them. Now that that boxings out the way I can actually tell you guys what I'm reading at the minute. So if you've seen last week's vlog you'll know that I finished my prompts for the witch path so I'm officially a witch and now I'm on my courtier path. I've already read the first book for that one and now I'm on my second which is Days of Blood and Starlight. I'm sorry I don't have the dust jacket with me but this is the second book in the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series by Lainey Taylor. I am about 70 odd pages through but I just cannot get into this story. I cannot sit down and read a good chunk of it. It's it's just been like 20 or 30 pages here and there and I think that's because I read the first book so long ago I think it was a year or two ago and I'm just finding it really really difficult to get back into this world and I don't know why <laughs> I remember most of the plot points and that but it's just not engaging enough for me at the minute and I think that's why I put it down the first time I did pick this up straight after I read the first book and I got I think seven or eight pages in and I put it down so I am trying to complete this trilogy now but oh my goodness I don't know why and I'm finding myself not wanting to pick it up and if I do pick it up I'm just not that interested so I'm hoping once I reach the 100 page mark or a bit further in that it will pick up because yeah at the minute I'm just finding myself not reaching for it and because I was having such a weird time with that book I decided to start a light read which is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. This is over 800 pages long. It's not on my TBR but I'm picking it up anyway. <laughs> so I might read this for the host favourite prompt. At the minute I have the bone season on there by Samantha Shannon because Samantha Shannon is Ashley's favourite author so I could use this but I've really wanted to read The Bone Season for so so long and I've kept putting it off 
so I might try and read both, I'm not sure. But at the minute I am reading this chunk of a book and I'm actually about 100 pages in and I am loving this so far. I thought it would be so hard to get into, everyone said it was really slow to start off with, it was a bit confusing but honestly I didn't find that at all. Obviously when you start a new adult fantasy book it's going to be a bit difficult to get your head around things but it's not any more difficult than any of the adult fantasies that I've read. In terms of the world building or anything like that I think this is doing a really good job of familiarising the reader with the world and the characters. I don't know, I really really enjoyed this. Like I said, I read 100 pages yesterday, I'm on page 102. It obviously does take me a bit longer to read this because it is high fantasy, but if I can read about 100 pages a day this week, I will have more or less finished it. And yesterday I didn't even start reading this until about 6 o'clock in the evening, so if I pick up the pace and, you know, start reading a bit earlier on in the day, then I should be able to get this done. The main reason I picked this up is because Olivia from Olivia Reads a Latte recently announced that she wanted to do a read-along for this book and she posted a whole announcement video for it and it's one that I've been wanting to pick up for a while especially in the past few months being in self-isolation I kind of wanted to tackle a big book and this one just kept staring at me from my shell and with Olivia posting that announcement video I thought it was the perfect time to pick it up however by now I should be about 500 pages in and I didn't start this readathon until yesterday so I have a lot of catching up to do but I'm so glad that I decided to go with it. Also, can we appreciate that I am matching this book right now? <laughs> I didn't mean to, but there we are. I love that for me. But yeah, I feel like this is going to be my main read of the week just because I haven't stopped thinking about it all night and I've been filming and stuff today so I haven't had the chance to sit down and read anything yet and my mind just keeps wandering back to this book. So I feel like I'm in the mood to read this so I'm going to go with that and I'm going to dive in and out of this when I feel like it. I'm not going to force myself to read it because if I do that I'm going to be in a massive slump. So the plan for this week is to read these two books. I don't know if I'll finish The Priory of the Orange Tree because I think the readathon finishes next week so I might spread it over two but once I'm really into a story I find it so difficult to stop so I might just power through and read the whole thing, we'll see. My plan for the rest of today is to read The Priory of the Orange Tree. Like I said I'm really into it and I feel like once I pass the 200 page mark it's gonna get really interesting. That's usually when high fantasies pick up so I cannot wait for that and I definitely think I can get another 100 pages done today. I'm gonna put my mind to it, I'm gonna put some ASMR rooms on in the background and probably light a candle just to get nice and cosy today. It's raining as well so it's a very cosy day and I literally don't have to do anything else and yeah I'm very excited and I guess I'll update you guys once I'm further into this book. Hi guys, so this is a setting that you won't have seen before but I'm in the spare room of my house at the minute just because Tom's on his Xbox and stuff downstairs and he's quite loud so I thought I'd just come in here and update you guys because I haven't updated since it's the first clip I filmed I don't think so. It's about time I got around to doing that. I have made quite a bit of a dent in the Priory of the Orange Tree. I'm about 350, 354 pages in right now so not quite halfway but almost there and oh my goodness I am loving this so so much. I don't think I told you what this is about but honestly I feel like it's so so hard to describe. It's basically about two queendoms. One of them worship dragons, the other completely hates dragons and that's because there is a draconic plague going around where people can get very ill and they can die. One of the queens of the kingdoms is said to be the descendant of someone who actually got rid of the dragons from the country and so it's said that as long as their line will continue then the dragons will not awaken. However, a few dragons have appeared in this part of the country with the threat of the nameless one which is the main dragon coming back. So it's all about that. I will definitely leave the link to to the Goodreads page for this down below just because I don't really know how to explain it. I'm still not even halfway so there's a lot of stuff going on that hasn't yet come together but it's so so good. We're following quite a few different people and I really enjoy every single character except for Nicholas Roos. I don't like him at all and you'll probably know why if you've read this. I don't know if that will change but as of now I don't like him and I've just gotten to a part actually where something really bad has happened with him and I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to spoil it but oh my goodness I am so scared and I hope everything gets resolved and it's all good because if it's not I think I'll probably cry. <laughs> 
But moving on, today is actually Saturday, which means it is the 24 hour readathon for Make Your Myth Taker. So I have put down Priory for now just because I want to take my time with that and really pay attention to it because, like I said, there's so much going on and it is a high fantasy. So I want to give it the time it deserves. And instead, I picked up And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. So this is actually going to replace, was it Days of Blood and Starlight? I can't even remember the name of the book. But this does have red on the cover, so I'm counting that as a book with royal colours on the cover. This is one I've been wanting to read for so so long and I've kept putting it off I think just because I was a bit scared to read it because it's very hyped and it is said to be one of Agatha Christie's best works but I decided that I would pick this up today because it's a mystery. I feel like I'm really getting into mysteries at the minute especially Agatha Christie because her books are quite short but there's so much going on in these. I feel like I fly through them. I did read Murder on the Orient Express for a 24 hour readathon a while ago now it was for the basically readathon and I did film a vlog so I will try and leave it up there if I can but yes I decided to pick this one up and I am actually 100 pages in right now and I'm really enjoying it the first few pages are obviously a bit confusing because it's introducing all the different characters and in this book 10 people are brought together from completely different backgrounds and are put on an island I don't think any of them know each other but they've all received some correspondence asking them to arrive on the island Island at a certain date so that's what's happened but things are revealed and one by one these people die so it's all about finding out who did it more or less and I honestly don't have a clue how it's gonna go the author's note of this made me laugh because Agatha Christie is basically just praising herself for writing the mystery and this is quite funny but I'll just say what it says because I really enjoyed this note I had written this book because it was so difficult to do that the idea had fascinated me ten people had to die without it becoming ridiculous or the murderer being obvious. I wrote the book after a tremendous amount of planning and I was pleased with what I had made of it. It was clear, straightforward, baffling and yet had a perfectly reasonable explanation. In fact, it had to have an epilogue in order to explain it. It was well received and reviewed but the person who is really pleased with it was myself for I knew better than any critic how difficult it had been. I am so intrigued. I don't think I'll be able to guess what's going on because like Agatha Christie said herself, she had such a hard time coming up with how to write this that I feel like the execution of it's just gonna be amazing. 100 pages in, in this edition it's almost halfway. I'm very very excited to carry on. There is an Instagram live planned for two o'clock I think and that's gonna be with Jean and Ashley so I am gonna sit down and read along with them because I always enjoy read-ins because I feel like it does force me to read and I like that we also have some breaks just to you chat and stuff as well so yes I'm hoping to get more read for that. I am including this in the weekly vlog this time because last week I did try and film a 24 hour reading vlog. I haven't edited it but I don't think it's going to be a good one so I think I'd rather just put this in the weekly vlog and have it make sense. Also because I'm only trudging through this at the minute so I don't want to carry on updating you about my progress through this and not talking about another book so yes. Hoping to finish this today. I probably will I'm not gonna lie but I normally say that and something happens so we'll see but for now I'm gonna get reading and I'll update you guys once I'm a bit further in. So I've just received this box through the post. I actually won this in a Facebook giveaway so I do tend to enter those sometimes especially if it's stuff that I feel like I'm gonna like and once you see what's in this box you will know why I entered but I've never won until now and this is the best thing I could have won honestly because if you can't tell it says there cinder bake kitchen and I'm just gonna open it for you guys just look at that I am so so excited so I do have the little cards here so it says we have two double chocolate brownies two Nutella and twill blondies two cookies and cream brownies and two Biscoff blondies so I'm guessing these are like double portions so Tom and I are gonna absolutely devour these oh my goodness they all look amazing I've never won a giveaway before and now I won one for brownies so this is the best day of my life I'm so excited and I thought I'd film it just because it's quite funny but yeah enter these giveaways guys you never know what you can win guys 
So this is just going to be a quick update because I have actually finished and then there were none by Agatha Christie. But if you haven't noticed, I have put some makeup on and that is because I've actually been invited to participate in Karis's fandom quiz. So she's hosting a live show with a bunch of different booktubers and yeah, she has invited me to join. So I'm going to be joining the Lord of the Rings round, which I'm so, so excited about because it's my favourite ever fandom. I absolutely love it, but I'm terrified that I'm going to do really badly <laughs> because I'm so bad under pressure. But that will actually be up for you now so if you want to check it out I will leave the link down below and oh my goodness I am so excited and terrified at the same time but I'm just so so happy that I've got this opportunity because I am a very small booktuber I've got 200 subscribers now so yeah this is a really cool thing and I'm so so excited to take part so I just wanted to pop in and tell you that and yeah I guess I'll give you an update for this later on because right now I'm just a bit anxious and I'm not in the right mindset to try and describe something to you. I am currently watching the quiz in another room and then and once it gets closer to my round, I'm gonna go and set up and join the stream. Wish me luck, but obviously by the time you've seen this, the quiz will have already happened, so please check that out. I'm so, so excited. I wanna say thank you to Rihanna for joining us, like, super late. So yeah, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Hello. I never updated you guys after the quiz, but I had such a good time on there. I did really, really well. Actually, I got tied first in my round, which is really cool. I think I only got one question wrong as well, which I'm kicking myself for because I should have known it, but oh well. <laughs> anyway, moving on to actually give you information about the books I read this week. Like you saw in my last clip, I did mention that I finished And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. I finished this at around half six in the afternoon I think so I could have read another book but like I said the quiz was on and I was watching it and sort of playing along so I didn't but this was amazing it was so so good even after I finished the book I had to go back and reread the epilogue to get my head around it because honestly it's crazy and I feel like I definitely need to reread this because now knowing how it ends and who was behind it all I feel like I'd really appreciate it if I re read it so that's definitely going to happen but oh my goodness it was crazy you literally don't have a clue what's going on until the last page and like I said I had to reread that because I was still so confused and shocked so yes if you want a murder mystery that's extremely compelling and so so complex and just confusing to the point where it seems like there's no real killer then this is the one for you. This is definitely a five star read for me. I just could not put it down like I said it was one of those where I just wanted to keep going because it's only a short book and so much happens that you just need to wrap your head around it so it's a very very quick read but such a powerful one because like I said I'm still thinking about it what two days later and I just cannot wrap my head around it and I really want to reread it straight away but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but yeah I'm so so glad I decided to read this for the 24 hour readathon. I did only manage to read this like I said so my page count was 250 pages for 24 hours which isn't bad but I feel like I could have read another book like this. So who knows maybe I'll try and do that next time maybe try and read two Agatha Christie's but I don't want the mystery elements to be confused in my head so maybe not we'll see. Please pick this up if you haven't. I feel like it is a good place to start with Agatha Christie but warning it is confusing for the first 50 odd pages I'd say. There's so many names, there's like a bit of character information that is quite overwhelming but as soon as you get past that it's fine. I also just remembered that I did a haul for Agatha Christie books at the start of this vlog so I feel like it's fitting that I read this in this vlog and I really really loved it. Please pick this up if you haven't, I highly recommend it and I can't wait to give it a reread. And then we come to this beast of a book which is the Priory of the Orange Tree and I'm so happy to say that according to Goodreads I am 70% of the way through and oh my goodness I have no idea how these last few hundred pages are gonna go. I'm so so scared because nothing's resolved and I don't know how we're gonna come to the point where everything comes together. I absolutely have no idea because I've read what over 500 pages. I'm on page 582 right now so I have about 200 odd pages left and yeah I don't have a clue how it's gonna go but I feel like these 500 pages have gone so fast I don't feel like the story's dragged at all I've just wanted to keep reading throughout this whole thing I haven't put it down and not wanted to pick it up I've literally just sat down and read 100 pages every day and I'm loving it and I'm so glad that I decided to do that I'm just terrified now for the ending because no one is in a good situation at the minute and I don't know how to feel about that we have had the romance but to be honest with you 
I didn't feel it at first. I like it now and I think it's a really good addition to the story. But to start off with, it was just the timing for me that did not make sense. I'm not gonna spoil it, don't worry, but if you've read the book, you know that something has happened and then our two main characters get together, but I feel like it's just way too soon after what's happened because that would take a massive effect on anyone. So the timing of that just didn't sit right with me, but after carrying on with the story, I love it so, so much. I think my favourite character in this at the minute, even though we've not seen a lot of her, is Tane. I feel like she's going to be very important in this last chunk of the book. We've not seen a lot of her throughout this book, which I was a bit shocked by. We do focus a lot on the West and we don't get as much attention on the East, which I don't mind, but I would have liked to see more from there because I feel like it's such an interesting place. And I wish we could have seen more of Tane before everything happened because after the big event that happened, you don't see as much of her for obvious reasons but I don't know, I feel like she's such an interesting character. She's got so much drive and potential that I would have liked to have followed her a bit more. But saying that, I love Iad so much. I genuinely think she's one of the best characters that I've read about for a long, long time. Just everything about her is just brilliant. I can't wait to see how their stories possibly come together in this last part. I just feel like that would be such a good meeting. So yes, that's my progress for this. I feel like I'm gonna finish it in the next two to three days. Like I said, I've got about 200 pages left and I have been reading it in chunks of about 100 pages. I haven't read my section for today, but I will be doing that later. And then I should have about 100, 150 pages left, which I'm very, very excited about, but I'm so scared to see how this finishes because like I said, it's all up in the air at the minute. But as everything is right now, this is definitely gonna be a new favorite. I am loving this so so much and like I said considering it's an 800 plus page book I'm flying through it and I don't really want to put it down. Please 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 check out this book if you haven't. I feel like it's such a good one if you want to get into high fantasy as well because like I said for me at least I could get into this pretty quickly and after the 150 to 200 page mark I feel like you're fully immersed in the story and you can read it without getting confused anymore. So yes I highly recommend this and I hope that you pick it up. Right that is it for today's vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was a bit better than last week's vlog because I feel like it is. I've had a bit of everything in this vlog from unboxings to 24 hour readathons to getting some good exciting news so I hope it was fun to watch. I definitely had a really really good week and I'm so glad that I did because I feel like the past few weeks have just been quite rubbish so yes this is such a good week and I hope you enjoyed watching this vlog. If you did please give it a like as well as clicking the subscribe button down below if you'd like to see more content from me it would mean the absolute world to me thank you so so much for watching and i will see you soon in my next video goodbye